think the reason that uh, you can find an astrophysicist working in climate change is because uh, it, it turns out that uh, climate uh, is affected by things which are uh, outside the atmosphere. The evidence is there that the sun has a large effect on climate, uh, but it is uh, mostly ignored. You can quantify the effect of the sun and see that um, it's very large, uh, yet uh, if you open, say, the last IPCC report, uh, they won't mention it. They'll actually say that uh, the sun has a minute effect on the climate. In particular, because uh, the climate is affected by uh, the sun and uh, other things which are outside the solar system, uh, you will find uh, that uh, you need at least, in, in order to understand uh, those aspects, you need an astrophysicist. The standard IPCC view of uh, the effects of the sun is that the sun affects the climate only through changes in the solar irradiance. Uh, these are just changes in the total solar output. But uh, we know today that uh, there must be another effect uh, which links solar activity to climate. Um, we can quantify it, we can see that it's uh, much larger. The sun is not a constant star. Um, it has variations on uh, various timescales, uh, probably, uh, I mean, most people heard of the 11-year solar cycle, which is a, a cycle of about 11 years, over which the polarity of uh, the north and south magnetic poles uh, switch. Um, a, on longer timescales, there are secular variations which uh, modulate it. Now, a, uh, and then on very short timescales, you have things like uh, coronal mass ejections, you have eruptions on the, on the sun. Now those things, they translate to variations in various uh, things. For example, the total solar radiance changes by typically 0.1% over those 11-year uh, solar cycle uh, variations and over the longer modulation timescales. Um, but in addition to the changes in the solar radiance, which are actually very small, about 0.1%, you have also variations in other components of the sun. You have changes in the uh, magnetic fields. Uh, as I said, uh, the magnetic field changes polarity. Uh, you have changes in the number of sunspots, which are associated with the magnetic field, because the sunspots are basically the, the footprints of where the magnetic field, uh, or ma magnetic field loop, loops penetrate the, uh, the solar surface. Um, you have changes in the amount of uh, UV, which are relatively large. Uh, you have changes in the X-rays. Uh, you have changes in the strength of the solar wind. Uh, we know that the sun is a solar wind because we can measure it, but we have uh, known that for decades because you, know, you can see comets have tails which always uh, stretch uh, in the opposite direction of the sun because the solar wind uh, blows away this, uh, the tail from the, from the comets. Uh, we know that those particles, when they reach the Earth, they can penetrate the atmosphere. Um, and because they are charged, the, you know, the, the charged electrons, uh, they cannot cross magnetic fields, but instead they move uh, along the magnetic fields, field lines, and they penetrate uh, the atmospheres. And uh, when they reach a typical height of about 100 kilometers, they collide with uh, uh, molecules in the atmosphere, they ionize them, and then when they recombine, we see the northern lights. So there are a lot of variations associated with uh, solar activity, um, ranging from changes in the solar radiance to, uh, to auroral activity, to changes in, uh, in even the Earth's magnetic field because it's, uh, it's affected by the solar wind and things like that. It would require the IPCC to uh, significantly uh, amend its uh, picture and uh, the net consequence would be that uh, things are significantly less dire than uh, what we're being told. Um, so people will uh, naturally try to do their best to avoid this kind of evidence, which uh, forces them to change their uh, worldviews, basically. Mm -hmm.